है
ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಛಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಘೋರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಛಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಘೋರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಧ್ವಚ ಛಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಭಗವತ್ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಛಂದ ಧ್ಯಾಯ ಘೋರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ನಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ನಾಮ ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಆಂ ಹರಿ ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋರಂಗ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇಳ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರಿ ಆಂ ಹರಿ ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ರಮ ಹರೆ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಹಮ ಹರೆ ಹಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಗೌರಂಗ ಹೇ ಹಾರ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೇತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ 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 ಆ ಹರಿ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಧಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೇ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೇತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರಿ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಧಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೇಳ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ಹಾಂ ಹರೆ ಹಾಂ ಧಾಮ ಧಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹ 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 हम हरे हाँ राम राम हरे 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 गो हंगा है हार के सारे सारे लगे सारे हरे हरे हम हरे हम राम राम हरे हरे हर के सार के सारे कृष्ण सा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हर के सार के सारे कृष्ण सा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण सारे हरे हरे हम हरे हम 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 हरे हर हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण सारी हरे हरे हम हरे हम राम राम हरे हरे हे हो मिठा घोर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे हरे हरि ओम हरि ओम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे हरि ओम हरे ओम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण सारी हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मिठाई घो हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि भाव मिठाई घो हरि भो हरि भो हरे भाव मिठाई घो मिठाई घो हरि भाव हरे भाव हरि भाव हरे भाई हिंदे थाय घो ही भौ हरे भौ हरे भौ हरे भाई जाय जाय प्रभु भाग प्रभु भाग प्रभु भान जाय प्रभु भाग जाय जाय भगवान 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 जाय भगवान भगवान जाय भगवान भगवान ने थाय घोड़ी भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव हरे भाव ने थाय घोड़ हे थाय घो हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि भाव हे थाय घो हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि भाव हरि हे थाय घो हरिओ हरिभा हरि जाय 
Kishore, 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 Jai, Kishore, Kishore, Hey, 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 Kishore, 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 He, Kishore, 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 Kishore. Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath, Jai Malade Jai Subhadra. Jai Jagannath, Jagannath, Malade Subhadra. Hari Gold of Premanande, Hari Hari Ho, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Hari Ram Sankirtan Ki, Thai Gold Premanande, Gold of Premanande, Gold Premanande. Jai Ram Vishwabhava Brahmahamsa, Hari Raza Kacharya Sutra Sata, Sri Sri Mahat Esi Bhakti Danta Swam Srila Prabhupada Ki, Iskon Samstha Bhagacharya Srila Prabhupada Ki, Namacharya Sri Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Seka Ho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Radha Ashura Sadi Vaura Bhakta Rinda Ki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Bhupinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardham Ki Sri Maya Purdham Ki Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki Shama Veta Bhakta Rinda Ki All Glory is to the Assembled Devotees All Glory is to the Assembled Devotees All Glory is to the Assembled Devotees All Glory is to Sri Guru and Gauranga Hare Krishna. Is it Jai Balaram or Jai Baladev? 
Jai Baladev. Wonderful. Amazing. Steve, you want to play the harmonium? Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hai Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hai Gopi Janavalabha Kirihar Ahaneha Jai Gopi Janavalabha Kirihar Ahaneha Sūrnandanna bhajājana hanjhānāya Sūrnandanna bhajājana hanjhānāya Jammūna tēra hanjhāna Not a 
Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahans, Parivajaka Charja, Astotara Sattva Sri Sriman, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, His Founder Acharya, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Rajgranta Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Sri Si Ki Shor Ki Shori Ki Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai, Sri Si Gornitai Ki Jai, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Ikarasi Vratta Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees, glories to the assembled devotees, glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om This is Canto 7, Chapter 4. The chapter is entitled, Harani Kashipu Terrorizes the Universe, Text 37. Yasta Kridana Kobalho Jaravatan Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihitatma Na Veda Jagat Idrisham Nyasta Kridana Kobalho Jaravatan Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihitatma Na Veda Jagat Idrisham Nasta Krida Nako Balho Jadavat Tan Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihi Tatma Naveda Jagat Idrisham
Ladies, Krishna Graha Kihitatma Yasta, having given up Krida Naka, all sportive activities or tendencies for childhood play. Bala, a boy. Jagat Bhat, as if dull, without activities. Tan Manastaya, by being fully absorbed in Krishna. Krishna Graha, by Krishna, who is like a strong influence, like a Graha, or planetary influence. Grihita Atma, whose mind was fully attracted, na, not, veda, understood, jagat, the entire material world, idrisham, like this. Translation in purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. From the very beginning of his childhood, Prahlad Maharaj was uninterested in childish playthings. Indeed, he gave them up altogether and remained silent and dull, being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Since his mind was always affected by Krishna consciousness, he could not understand how the world goes on being fully absorbed in the activities of sense gratification. Hmm. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Prahlad Maharaj is a vivid example of a great person fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 8274, it is said, Stavara Jagaram Stavara Jangama Deha Nadeha Tara Murti Sravata Hoye Nitya Ista Deva Sporti. A fully Krishna conscious person, although situated in this material world, does not see anything but Krishna, anywhere and everywhere. This is the sign of a Mahabhagavat. The Mahabhagavat sees Krishna everywhere because of his attitude of pure love for Krishna. As confirmed in the Brahma Samhita 538, Yam Shama Sundara Machinta Guna Sarupam Govindam Hari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship the primeval Lord Govinda, who is always seen by the devotees, whose eyes are anointed with the pulp of love. 
He is seen in his eternal form of Shamsundar, situated within the heart of the devotee. An exalted devotee, or Mahatma, who is, rare, who is rarely to be seen, remains fully conscious of Krishna and constantly sees the Lord within the core of the heart. It is sometimes said that one is, when one is influenced by evil stars like Saturn, Rahu, or Ketu, he cannot make advancement in any prospective activity. In just the opposite way, Prahlad Maharaj was influenced by Krishna, the supreme planet, and thus he could not think of anything of the material world and live without Krishna consciousness. This is a sign of Mahabhagavat. Even if one is an enemy of Krishna, a Mahavak Bhagavat sees him to be also engaged in Krishna's service. Another crude example is that everything appears yellow to a jaundice eye. Similarly, to a Mahabhagavat, everything but Krishna himself appears to be engaged in Krishna's service. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. everyone but himself appears to be engaged in Krishna's service. I'll read that line again. Similarly, to a Mahabhagavat, everyone but himself appears to be engaged in Krishna's service. Prahlad Maharaj is an approved Mahabhagavat, the supreme devotee. In the previous verse, it is stated that he had natural attachment, naisargiki rati. The symptom of such natural attachment for Krishna is described in this verse. Although Prahlad Maharaj was only a boy, he had no interest in playing. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.42, Virakta Anyata Cha. The symptom of perfect Krishna consciousness is that one loses interest in all material activities. For a small boy to give up playing is impossible, but Prahlad Maharaj, being situated in first class devotional service, was always absorbed in trance of Krishna consciousness. Just as a materialistic person is always absorbed in thoughts of material gain, a Mahabhagavat, like Prahlad Maharaj, is always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unrilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Tadanti Swam Padanti Kam Bande Ham Shiguro Shiuta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavamscha Shi Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha Hey Krishna, Karuna, Sindhu, Dina, Bandhu, Jagatpate, Gopesha, Gopika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Namostate, Tapta, Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Brinda, Vineswari, Rishabhanu, Sutti, Devi, Pranamami, Hari, Priye, Pancha, Kalpa, Tarubhischa, Kripa, Sindhu, Bevacha, Patitanam, Bhavane, Bhyo, Vaishnave, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pasyatyade Satarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunathananda Siya Dvaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gauda Bhaktavin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Shaila Prabhupada Ki Jai hmm. So, Prahlad Maharaj is, he is described here by his character, his symptoms and his pure devotion to the Lord. And, uh, we might take the principle of a Mahabhagavat. There are different levels of spiritual practices and different categories of devotees who practice on these different spiritual levels. <laughs> you might use the example of you know, education, an educational system. There's different levels of education given to the prospective students. And some are beginning, some are 
beyond the beginning. And some are actually, when we say situated in the educational system as a, as a feature of their life. And then some are getting close to graduation and some have actually graduated and some are actually getting honorary degrees such as MA, PhD, like that. So if you were to examine the system, you will see there's a different set of educational principles that are being taught on every level. And nothing is being taught beyond the level one is practiced. So, but on the highest level, there's no more teaching. There's only, only realization of the teachings. The teachings no longer are important because the teachings have been imbibed on the lower levels. And then on the highest level, one is practicing the teachings in full. So here, we're, under, we're seeing the PhD of bhakti. <laughs> we might use that example. That what is the highest is maha bhagavat. Maha means great, and bhagavat in this case means one who has great devotion for the Supreme Lord Bhagavan. So here, what are the symptoms? So we might think, well, you know, we're never, we're not close to that level. What is, what is these symptoms seem impossible to practice or even, uh, even imagine what it's like to have these characteristics and qualities. But here, Bhagavatam wants to teach us what is the highest. And not that we can all of a sudden jump up to the highest level, just like you can't skip through the grades and expect to jump into the college if not even going to high school. You have to go through the system and then gradually make step by step, and then the, the knowledge becomes internalized. So in the same way, we get an understanding of what is the highest in relationship to our own level of practice. And we can see how far we have to go <laughs> in order to achieve perfection in devotional service. So here, these symptoms are given. That one doesn't see anything but Krishna. <laughs> How do they live in this world? They simply see this world as a reflection of the energy of Krishna, and they see Krishna's form within the energy. It's described in other places in the Bhagavatam. They see the tree, but they see Krishna within the tree. Not just a theoretical idea of a spirit, but the actual transcendental form of Krishna, situated within all, within all the, what we say, the all configurations of the material energy. Pretty high level of spirituality, huh? Seeing Krishna everywhere. And when they see other persons, this is, easy, this is even more harder to understand. We can understand, okay, they've reached that stage because we understand that everything is the energy of Krishna, and Krishna is energy, and Krishna is non-different, but different. Non-different is that there's no, connect, there's no separation between Krishna and his energy. So one who realizes Krishna in full also sees Krishna within the energy also. And there's no difference. That we can understand. That's a little bit, that's easy. Not easy, but it's digestible, <laughs> we might say. But here, to see everyone else serving Krishna better than you, and you're on the highest platform of realization. Try to figure that one out. <laughs> you can't. So we don't try to figure it out. We can accept it because the Shastras are giving us this understanding of what are some of the qualities and characteristics. So this means that one is actually seeing themselves totally unqualified, but at the same time fully qualified. In this material world, when you're qualified, you're qualified, right? <laughs> you know I'm qualified. In spiritual life, the more you become qualified, the more you think you're unqualified. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> but that is the reality. That the qualities of a Vaishnav bloom along with his devotion. And one of those qualities is one is humility. And thinking oneself the lowest of the low. And therefore, in that consciousness, one sees others always in a better and greater position than they are. Amazing, huh? Amazing.
And here, Prabhupada even makes a point. They see their enemy, not their enemy, Krishna's enemy as serving Krishna better than they are serving Krishna. Hmm. One of the qualities of that type of knowledge is they understand a little bit about the greatness of Krishna and therefore understanding how great Krishna is, they understand how small they are. And this is a quality for making advancement in spiritual life. When we understand how, as we understand how great Krishna is, our own understanding of our own insignificance increases. <laughs> right? You, when you get good at something, you start feeling a little, well, you know, I got it. <laughs> I'm a little, you know, I pretty, I got this Krishna consciousness down now, right? It's not a problem. <laughs> but no, it's not like that. It's the other way. One starts to say, I'm totally unqualified. The only reason I'm still able to execute devotional service is by mercy. And the mercy is actually greater than my efforts in devotional service. No one can understand the quality of the mercy that comes by way of an effort in devotional service. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme manifestation of that mercy. And that mercy flows through his pure devotees who distribute it to everyone. And it's unlimited. One, one time someone asked Srila Prabhupada, 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 please give me your mercy. Prabhupada said, I'm giving, just take it. <laughs> it's available. It's like you, if the sun was out and you were in your house and you say, where's the sunshine? Well, go outside. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> in the same way, when we practice devotional service, our success in devotional service is actually acquiring the mercy of the Lord. So therefore, in one sense, devotees are beggars. We beg for the mercy. We make the effort in the process, but the mercy is what makes everything, our efforts successful, that's all. Without the mercy, shrama eva hikevalam, which means everything we, we attempt is simply a useless waste of time. So here, Prahlad Maharaj, he, he has no understanding of what's going on in this material world. He doesn't really care either, but he doesn't have any, because he's simply absorbed in Krishna. <laughs> he sees Krishna everywhere, he sees Krishna within everything, and he sees himself as the servant of the Lord eternally. <laughs> This is realization. This is one of the important principles in the process of bhakti. We have to understand our real identity. Material identities are superfluous and external and extraneous to our actual real identity. What we are materially changes. So in one life we have a whole set of circumstances, a particular type of body, a particular place where we reside, a form of performing certain activities. We die, we leave that body, we take another life, the whole circumstances are changed. And this goes on life after life after life. So in this world, when we say there's nothing in this world that's real, what we say is there's nothing in this world that has real value. It's the value that's not real. The reality is that this material world is change. If you want to know one thing about this world that is constant, it's change. It's the only constant thing in this world is change. Everything is changing. So how can we find any satisfaction in anything that keeps changing? You can't, because as soon as you grab onto something, it changes. <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps moving like that. So you're trying to change with the changes. And so it's a hard struggle to keep up with something you can't do. So therefore, one should stop this useless endeavor and simply focus our consciousness on Krishna and on devotional service. There, because this world is always changing, one thing about our relationship with Krishna, it never changes. It only grows. You might say growing is also changing. 
But in this sense, the growth is that, that the changes that come about is more and more realization of our relationship with Krishna. So in that constant growth, we're always finding satisfaction. Always finding satisfaction. So therefore, it says that this material world is simply an ephemeral arrangement to simply bewilder the conditioned souls. That's all. We have to understand this. If we don't understand this point, we will not make spiritual advancement. What is it? That this world is simply meant for your suffering. That's all. Krishna says it. Dukalayam asastratam. Anityam asubam. He says it over and over again. This place is suffering. We don't get it, right? <laughs> we still have our plans for enjoyment. And it's, 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 it's like a fool. I remember I went to one, uh, I was giving a lecture in India. It was a very nice group of devotees, and then there was many guests, and there were some students that came from the university. So I was explaining this one point about material happiness, material suffering. So one, devote, one person, I said, well, in order to, to taste material happiness, yes, you have to have some suffering. Otherwise, you can't understand the value of happiness without a little bit of suffering because you know, it doesn't really, the proportions kind of like, well, when you get, when happiness, when suffering starts, you feel some happiness, right? That's called happiness in this world. So my answer was, well, there's a particular type of person, he's known as an idiot. <laughs> You've heard of an idiot. An idiot is a person who bangs his head against the cement wall as hard as he could, and then when he stops, he said, oh, this feels so good. When he, when he stops. All right. So that's material life. <laughs> and when, you, when, when we're not hitting our head against the wall and feeling pain, something stops for a while. That's called happiness. That's called an idiot's happiness, right? <laughs> so that's how this world is arranged, like that. So Prahlad Maharaj, he sees the world simply as Krishna's energy. He doesn't see the world as suffering. He's gone beyond that level. He has no, uh, no taste for enjoyment. He's tasting Krishna. Therefore, he sees this whole world as Krishna's energy. And he sees Krishna as everything. So it says from Mahabhagavat, even this world is a place of happiness. Completely contrary to those who see it as a place of enjoyment. When you don't want it, you get it. And when you want it, you can't have it. <laughs> if you want happiness, you don't get it. If you give it up, you get it. Prahlad Maharaj says that. You want to be happy in this world? Do one thing. Stop trying. Make sense? No. Put a big billboard on, on Route 95. <laughs> Here's the formula for happiness. Stop trying. People say, take it down, you know. It doesn't make sense. But materially, of course it doesn't make sense. Spiritually, but from a spiritual point of view, yeah, it makes complete sense because the world works under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna arranges for his devotee to purify ourselves through the energy of the material energy through the process of bhakti, using the material energy for Krishna's service and then we become purified from the desire to enjoy. Then that same energy becomes, what we say, a source of upliftment, knowledge, and joy. <laughs> All at once, the same energy. Anything, most things in this world, not everything, but most things in this world are dualistic. If something, if something is good and something is bad, the same thing is good and bad, depending on how you use it or how you see it. So in the spiritual th realm, everything is good. There's no question of bad because it's connected to the all-good source like that. So Prahlad Maharaj is on, like, on that platform. And Prabhupada makes this point that this is amazing for a young boy because what do children like to do? Play, right? Those of you who are mothers or fathers, you know, children, when they, they're always running around. They're always playing. They want you to play also. 
But you, you know, you sometimes you do that just to make them feel good. But that's their whole life, play. So, and then as they grow up, they play in different ways. <laughs> sometimes it becomes a little dangerous. <laughs> But that's the whole, the whole idea of material life, is to somehow or other enjoy. So children have that propensity from the very beginning, and that's all they want to do. Prahlad Maharaj, he's five years old. Amazing. If you, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures, he spoke practically the most on Srila Prahlad Maharaj amongst all the great saints written in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada was absorbed in Prahlad Maharaj. In fact, in 1977, his last year, he practically went over the seventh canto again, describing Prahlad Maharaj's qualities and activities. Prabhupada just loved to talk about Prahlad Maharaj because he was so amazing. He had no fear, he was completely absorbed in Krishna, and he was a five-year-old boy. It shows that even at that age, one can be fully Krishna conscious. We can, even at that age, one can be fully Krishna conscious. That's the power of, of devotional service, like that. So here, Prabhupada quotes one very interesting verse here from the uh, Brahma Samhita, that when one's eyes are anointed with love, one sees the object of that love with great emotion and feeling. In other words, how do you anoint the eyes with love? The, the example is given, ladies like to make their eyes look beautiful, right? You know, they spend sometimes half a day in a mirror looking, you know, painting the eyes with the mascara and twirling the eyelashes and making it all. Sometimes they put gopi dots and all kinds of stuff, right? You know, men, you guys don't do that so long. But, you, you know, ladies, they like, you know, this is, the, this is like a pastime. They stand in front of the mirror and they... So the eyes become beautified by all this extra work, right? Okay. So what's, what's being added? A kind of an ointment over the eyes to make the eyes beautified, right? So what is the ointment here that makes the eyes beautified? It's bhakti or pure love. But how does the eyes become uh, ornamented with love? through the process of the ears. Want to make the eyes beautiful? Use the ears. The ears are connected to the eyes, and as one hears more and more the glories of the Lord, the names of the Lord, the qualities of the Lord, the pastimes of the Lord, the uh, forms of the Lord, then the eyes become transformed. One, a Mahabhakwat, if he would stand in front of the deity now, he would just faint out of love. Right? We look at the deity, sometimes we see something, sometimes we don't. We just see some decorations. You know, we see different levels. But that's Krishna standing there, and that's Radharani there. They're there fully, in their full manifestation of themselves. Can we see like that? Well, when the eyes of, are anointed more and more with love, Krishna reveals himself through that loving uh, glance. So the ears are very much fundamental to make the eyes work. <laughs> the process of hearing about Krishna. Chanting the holy names of the Lord is not enough. Uh, I just blew it, I made a mistake. <laughs> I said something that was against Shastra. <laughs> but what am I saying is that when one gets attached to chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one starts to want to hear more about Krishna's pastimes. And this is where the full manifestation of that loving relation starts to boom. We start hearing more and more about Krishna. Prabhupada wrote so many books, translated so many, just to give us a taste for the transcendental realm of Krishna consciousness, the pastimes of the Lord. We don't have any time too many things to do, right? But this is a sad thing. If we don't have time to hear about Krishna and Krishna's pastimes, then we were missing the beauty of devotional service. We do our service, that's nice. 
But Prabhupada was giving one class one day. It was in Mayapur, 1974. I remember it's September 1974. He was speaking. And while he was speaking, some devotees were doing things. He stopped the class. He says, what is all this? Why are you not sitting down and hearing? This is most important. If you don't hear this philosophy and you don't hear about Krishna after some time, you will think, what a burden this Krishna consciousness is. He said, he went on for about 10 minutes, <laughs> chastising everybody. It was pretty heavy. I was shaking just listening. And I was, not, I was on the, rec you know, I was like, that's like I'm listening on a recorder, you know, I wasn't even there. <laughs> Prabhupada just wanted to make a point that this is Krishna consciousness, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, the holy names of the Lord, Krishna's pastimes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, uh, Ram's Leela. This is where we get a taste for Krishna consciousness. And that taste, when it becomes awakened, and then we can develop symptoms similar to Prahlad Maharaj. We see this world simply as a botheration, that's all. <laughs> and we become more and more absorbed in Krishna. Of course, Krishna is all attractive. He's, all, he's the most attractive. And he's always fresh. Every day the deity is dressed, but every day he looks like, like the first time you saw him. <laughs> because Krishna's Navayovanam, he's always freshly appearing in his transcendental forms to his devotees, just to inspire his devotees, like that. So this process of hearing is such, such a fundamental point in our advancement in Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gives a very strong statement. You want to hear it? You ready? Okay, it's pretty strong. I won't tell you. <laughs> oh, no, I'll tell you. I'm just testing you just to see how much you wanted to hear it. <laughs> okay, he says that sometimes we hear people say, I have no time for chanting, I have no time for reading. He said, this is karma buddhi. Karma buddhi. That means this is a, a karmic mentality, the intelligence of a, a car, of a one who works all the time. No time to hear, no time to chip. He says, one will never get the mercy of the spiritual master, and this type of mentality is like a bad smell coming from the body. Oh. <laughs> That's the exact statement. I told you, okay? We have to take time and hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We do it individually, or we can do it in a group. But this is the, this is the, this is the, the sweetness of Krishna consciousness. Krishna comes to this material world to display his transcendental pastimes. He has no business in this world. But he comes anyway, simply for the, to benefit the conditioned souls and to uplift the devotees like that. And so when he, be, he performs his pastimes, they're, they're very, very similar and almost exact to his pastimes in Vaikuntha, or in Goloka Vrindavan. So when we take some time to hear and chant the glories of... Uh, today is the 12th of, Ju of June, right? What's happening on the 17th? Who knows? Huh? What starts the 17th of this month? Purushottam Mas. It's for one month. This is called Krishna's month. It's there every 27 months of the lunar calendar cycle. This one month is there. It's Krishna's month. It says it's more auspicious and more powerful than Kartik. It is. And during this month, there are certain vratas that one can benefit by. And one of the vratas is to read Shastra, to hear more Shastras. It says that one should every day read or hear the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And also, if last year, I did, last cycle I did it, I was doing that plus the 14th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Brahma's prayers to Lord Krishna. Beautiful. And when, I, when the month was coming to an end, I was thinking, oh, it's ending. I have to stop my vrata 
Oh, this is terrible. It was such a taste. So it would be recommended, highly recommended, to adopt some Shastra austerity this time. Fifteenth chapter, maybe read Srimad Bhagavatam or Krishna's pastimes. And that way the benefit that is given during these months have, has greater spiritual credits. That's why they're there, to accelerate and to amplify our spiritual progress like that more and more. So these months are very, very auspicious. So it starts in five days on the 17th. So when we get attracted to hearing, so one might say, well, I'm not attracted to hearing. I'm not attracted to hearing about pastimes, Krishna. What do I do? Bhagavatam gives the answer. Shushusha saradhanasya vasudeva kata ruchi shanmaya seva vipa purnya tirtana seva not. Here's the way to get attracted to Krishna's pastimes. Serve the Vaishnavas. It says, by serving great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity to hear the message of Vasudeva Krishna. So by serving Vaishnavas, one develops a taste for hearing and chanting the Lord's glories. But along with that, we might use the old statement, just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just take time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Life is short. And we're sitting on this, what we say, treasure house of transcendental knowledge, which is fully there in these books and in the words of the great souls like that. Okay, so and this is how the eyes become purified through the process of shravanam, hearing more and more like that. Okay, any questions, comments? Yes, Jai Baladev. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, welcome back. Thank you for your... Um, Thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, so this point, um, maybe you could uh, uh, clarify some of these points. The point you were making about um, the more one is qualified, the more one feels unqualified. So this brings to mind like a lecture that Prabhupada gave uh, on Bhakti Siddhanta's disappearance day. Uh -huh. And he was, at the end of the lecture, he was kind of weeping in tears, offering his gratitude to his disciples, saying, thank you for helping me fulfill the mission of my spiritual master. Yeah, yeah. And in his lecture, um, Prabhupada used the word um, horrified, because when he saw Bhakti Siddhanta in a dream, he said, I was horrified. When he, he asked him to take sannyas. Yeah, sannyas, so he was I was horrified. So in this regard, my question is related to the fact that is it true that, you know, because often people say, you know, anyone can be a guru, that famous verse, Kiba Vipra, Kiba Niyasi, anyone can be a guru, but it seems like the qualification of those who kind of are successful as some spiritual leaders that, you know, anyone can be a guru, but the qualification is that I don't want to be a guru. It seems like the, the people who are very successful, like Prabhupada, they, they really don't want to be. And, but, you know, it seems like the Lord forces them either personally or through some devotees to so is that um, a right understanding, or maybe collaborate on that? Whatever position you have in spiritual life, it's an opportunity for service. That's all. It's not an opportunity for glorification of yourself. <laughs> you, you have one identity. That's all. One, <clears throat> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was asked about the same point. <clears throat> he answered in different ways. <clears throat> but he also said, anyone who says he's a guru is a goru. Guru means cow or animal. So when you identify yourself with the role you play, that's called misidentification. You play these roles as services. Sannyas, temple president, pot washer, mataji, whatever you are, whatever role you play, it's a role. You only have one identity. 
net identity doesn't change. Your roles will change. So, jivir surbhoik ne krishna nichidas. So, just try to be a servant. Don't try to be a guru. <laughs> just try to be a servant. And if you become very qualified in becoming a servant, then others will come to you for advice and direction. And then that allows you to take a position for the responsibility of other persons upliftment that's all that's all it's a responsible post that's all the more you make advancement the more you're given opportunities to make advancement by giving a, giving you a position to show your advancement in the form of more and more and more and more service that's all so don't try for anything but becoming a humble servant if we practice becoming a humble servant, that is perfect. <laughs> that's all. So really, really, that's all we can do. We are a servant. We can be a servant in different ways, but humility makes that qualification of a servant blossom. That's all. And Radhana Swami gives a lecture, you know, did he ask you, you, do you agree to be the servant of the servant of the servant? Did he ask you that during initiation? Yeah, that's okay. There you go. <laughs> He's reminding us of our identity. Right, that's all. Yes, Prabhu. Jagannath. Jai Jagannath. Jai Baladev. Jaga Jagannath. We need Jai Subhadra. <laughs> these are brothers, these two. Hare right, Krishna Maharaj, if you will... Um allow me, or perhaps you would like to do it yourself. But just um, echoing your message about the importance of Shravanam Kirtan culture, and you not can... allowing that to be eclipsed by services. Yes. Srila Prabhupada actually speaks about it quite a bit in several lectures. You, you go ahead. He speaks it here. I'll, uh, please, please. <laughs> um, so Srila Prabhupada is saying here, this is a Srimad Bhagavatam class, first canto, chapter 8, verse 19. <clears throat> Prabhupada says, so this is difficulty that we are not very much interested in hearing. And that is the main business. Our bhakti begins, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu. We have to hear and we have to speak, but if we are not interested in hearing and speak, then it will be the same, um, simply formula. Then he goes on, unless there's a life of Shravanam Kirtanam, these big, big buildings, temples, will become burden. Mm. So if we are, if we want to create burden for future, then we may give up this hearing and chanting and sleep very nicely. It will be burden. Galagraha, not Sri Vigraha, but Galagraha. Galagraha. Sri Vigraha means worshipable deity. So if we give up this Shravan Kirtan Vishnu, then it will be thought that, quote, our Guru Maharaj has given a burden in the neck, Galagraha. This is the danger. So we must be very much alert in Shravanam Kirtanam. Otherwise, all this labor will be futile. This building will be only the nest. For pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the doves and the pigeons. <laughs> that is the danger. That is being done. Nobody is interested in that encounter. Yeah. Uh, he just gave a whole class. <laughs> so we ha it can't be emphasized enough. You see, our society has gone through various transformations. And there was a lot of emphasis on the beginning <clears throat> on work, getting things done, building buildings, and, you know, spreading Krishna consciousness. Hearing and chanting was going on. <clears throat> But then after a while, it took a dive where, you see, the thing is, if you see success in your spiritual life by how much you do or what you do, what results you get, you're missing the whole point. Your success is by purification of your heart. If the heart is not becoming purified by what we do, then what is the value? Therefore, in order to, to bring about that purification, we have to have a healthy, regular dose of hearing and chanting. 
very and Prabhupada makes as you made as you made that point at the beginning so many places Prabhupada makes this point why because it's the fundamental point of our success in spiritual life in one pastime in Chaitanya Charitamrita I always hate to hesitate to say this in certain temples but I I'll say it anyway uh, there's one where Lord Chaitanya was staying at the house of Advaita Charya and he was just, he had just taken sannyas, he was there for one month. And then during that time, his mother, many of all his intimate associates, all night they were chanting and dancing and all day they were listening to various types of lectures on, on Krishna consciousness. So after one month, Lord Chaitanya decided to go on to Puri. When he was leaving, Advaita Charya started to chase him down the road and said, My dear Lord, we cannot bear your separation. Please come back. Stay for at least three or five more days. The Lord turned around and agreed. He stayed for one week. And then it says that, of course, three things went on in that house. Hari Kata, Hari Kirtan, and Hari Puja. Worship of the Lord hearing about the Lord and glorifying the Lord's holy name. And Prabhupada writes in the purport, it's in Madhya Lila chapter 3, verse 203, he writes that now we should immediately adopt this process in each one of our temples. We should have three hours of kirtan every night. <laughs> it's, in the, it's, in, it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can find it. Did, you looking it up, Shiv? Yeah. Three, Madhya 3203, yeah. So, yeah, Prabhupada, many times, he tried to get us to do more hearing and chanting, but we were more work-oriented. Work, work. Why? Because the, the idea is that when you do something, you actually think you accomplish something. And when you hear and chant, you can't see any tangible benefits. So I'm doing something. I'm doing more than you. Who cares? <laughs> it's about hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. We have our service, that's nice, and we should not neglect that, but it should be a healthy balance. And the balance should be misbalanced on the side of hearing and chanting, like that. So that's where the purification comes. So, we don't have a taste, and I mentioned how to get a taste, but one of the things you can do is just, see, a taste will awaken simply by concentrated hearing. It comes. At the beginning, or when we, get, when we break from that mood for a while, it, the taste is not there anymore. So how do you get it back? Just do it. <laughs> don't, even if it's a little dry, simply go through that dryness and so you can hear more and more like that. Because the soul naturally wants this. The mind will give, will block the soul's relationship with Krishna with so many misconceptions. Therefore, when we feed the soul the nectar that it's looking for, the nourishment, it becomes awakened. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, so sweet. You can choose whatever glories of the Lord you want to hear. It doesn't, you have, it doesn't say you have to hear these glories or this glories. It's unlimited. Yes. Thank you, Jagannath. Thank you. I think this is the same thing I was referring to. In my, it's in Mayapur? September 29th, 1974? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, he just turned, he turned the whole class around and started speaking that way. Thank you. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, here one sentence says that is some it is sometimes said that when the one is influenced by evil star, like Shatter, Rahu, or Ketu, he cannot make the advancement in any prospective activity. But the Prahlad Maharaj was uh, influenced by the Krishna planet. Krishna planet, and so he was absorbed in more Krishna, not affected by the material changes. Yeah. Now, the one who is advancing in Krishna consciousness also, 
it's not a Mahabhagavat, but he's trying to get, yeah. uh, you know, new fresh devotee or starting over there. So once he's, sometimes he affected by all this planetary movement and, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, this trouble also starts sometimes. Yeah, because, you know, the material energy is still there. We're still not on that platform. We're still affected by what happens materially. So in that case also, what person has to do more? Chant? Yeah, chant more. <laughs> Hear more. Hear more. Serve more. Hmm. The panacea for any, all success is association with devotees. In the association of devotees, everything is available. <laughs> Outside the association of devotees, you have to create an environment where you're not affected by the material energy, and that's difficult. So therefore we say Saru Sangha Saru Sangha Sarva Sastri Hoy Lava Matta Saru Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoy. Simply by hearing from sadhus, in the association of sadhus, one can become purified within a second. <laughs> so powerful. So therefore, yeah. When Lord Chaitanya was asked by Sanatana Goswami, what is what is the first business of a Vaishnav? First, asadsang tayaga e Vaishnava achar. To give up the association of materialistic persons and take the association of Vaishnavas devotees. From there, everything moves forward like that. So outside of our realm of devotee association, if we intimately associate with non-devotees, our spiritual life is finished. It goes down. If we associate with non-devotees simply for business purposes, but not intimate, then we're not affected. So don't get close to the non-devotees because then you will develop their characteristics and their likings like that. And they're so much eager to also to share it with you. <laughs> So, therefore, be business-like with the non-devotees and be intimate with the devotees, friendly with the devotees. And then your heart will find satisfaction like that. Yes, here must be... Did I say something wrong? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a verification on the last point. Marari, you have to go? Okay. Yeah. Um, same point, Jai Jagannath Prabhu was making, of course, from your class at hearing. Um, one particular lecture that Prabhupada I would like to recommend for everyone that I uh, keep in mind all the time. He, Prabhupada, there's a lecture on Prabhupada Bani called How Shall I Be Maintained? And he, essentially in this lecture, How Should I? How Shall I Be Maintained? So um, in this lecture, he makes the point that um, um, we should not always be absorbed in thoughts of how shall I be maintained? How shall I be maintained? We should be more concerned about maintaining our Christian consciousness. And the reason I really appreciated this lecture so much, because it reminds me of one of my favorite uh, section of the Gita in chapter 13, where it describes who's a rich person and who's a poor person. It essentially says that one who is, you know, money means happiness for most of us. Or most Chapter of 13 of Bhagavad Gita? Um, or Uddhava Gita. Uddhava Gita? Yeah, the separate printed version, not oh. the one in the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, that's the, the 11th canto. Yeah, yeah, 11th canto. So in that session it says, um, one who is dissatisfied with life um, is considered um, poor despite having lots of money. Like if somebody, I remember Radhanath Maharaj mentioned that you may have all the wealth in the world, but if someone insults you, you know, you, you, you can't, you, your mind is, you know, disturbed, you're actually poor. So mm -hmm. these good qualities, so I really appreciate it. that lecture. So I kind of highly recommend it in this regards to hearing. So it's called, How Shall I Be Maintained? So let's there's three modes of material nature. One is called ignorance, one is called passion, one is called goodness. The quality of the mode of ignorance is 
listen to this. If you listen, if you learn this, you'll understand how to live life. <clears throat> it's short. <laughs> A person in the mode of ignorance says, "If I can get something, and I can do something, I can be something." So what's first? Get, get. If I can get something, I can do something, I can be something. Mota Passion says, if I can do something, then I can get something, then I can be something. Mota uh, Goodness says, if I can be something, then I can do something, then I'll get something. So it's about being, not about getting or doing. So be Krishna conscious. <laughs> Then everything else will follow. You don't have to do anything separately. Do those things that are favorable to your Krishna conscious. Avoid those things that are unfavorable. That's all. That's that's the doing part. The getting part is get a chance, get as much service as you can, <laughs> or get get association of devotees. Or get yourself in a position to hear more and more. That's the getting part. The being is, being will come about automatically. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time, but I think you have, uh, there is breakfast on Akadasi, right? Yeah. yeah. Today's Akadasi, so we recommend more chanting and hearing. Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, Kadasi is the mother of devotion. So, it's an opportunity to make nice spiritual advancement by reducing bodily activities, increasing spiritual activities like that. Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srimad Pavad ki, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo.